Hi everyone and welcome to my live creative time today. My name is Mandy Witherby from Mandy's Papercraft Creations and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Sydney, Australia. It's great to have you all with me today. Um, whether or not you are watching live, watching the replay here on Facebook or watching over on my YouTube channel later on, thank you all so much for being here and I really appreciate um, you coming along and I appreciate your support. So if you like what you see here, feel free to give me a thumbs up, some hearts. I always have trouble doing that one. <laughs> um, yeah, feel free to comment both here and on my YouTube channel. And I always go back and um, view all of those comments and um, reply as much as, as much as I can. Sometimes Facebook hides a few of those comments, so I try to find them all and reply to them. Um, but yeah, it's just great to have you here. So while everyone is jumping on, I'll just call this up on my iPad and my computer. So I've got all my devices running because I'm never quite sure which one is going to cooperate. <laughs> so I'll bring that up and then I can see all of your comments there. So bear with me for two secs while I just get that ready. I'm going to turn my volume down as well. I'll do that on the computer as well. Turn that volume all the way down. All right, let's see. Turn that around that way and let's see if I can see your comments today. Okay. Oh, good. I can see them on my iPad right now. Yay! Awesome. Hey, Megan, how you going? Oh, you've been up since 2 a.m. Oh, my goodness. That's the time I was going to bed. <laughs> the last day of the scouting combined, trying to stay awake and plan for your trip. Oh, that's exciting. Let me just adjust that camera a little bit. feel like I'm chopping my head off a bit today. Hey, Laurie, all the way from Ohio. Great to have you with us. Hey, Deborah, how are you today? Great to have you with us as well. And we've got Susan here as well today. Hey, Susan, how are you going? You finally get to see a Monday Live with me. Awesome. That's so great. It's so good to have you with us. Hey, Roz. Roz is here as well. So wonderful to have you all with me today. Thank you so much for jumping on. Now, I'm just looking over to my computer for a moment because I want to just see if I can bring it up there as well. Hopefully, all my devices running. I'm not going to strain our internet too much, <laughs> but I like to keep both my computer and my iPad pad running at the moment because um, I've been having over the last few weeks I've been having difficulty seeing the comments sometimes they'll show up on my computer and sometimes then they'll freeze and I can only see them on my iPad and sometimes on my iPad I can't see them so okay turn all the devices on and we've covered all the bases <laughs> and let's hope we're all good alrighty so um, how is everybody how was your weekend we had a very wet weekend here in Sydney, lots more rain and more overnight tonight, uh, last night I should say, and uh, well early hours of the morning actually, it was keeping me awake, and um, yes we've just had a little bit more again too, so the weather is a little bit treacherous out there, so for any of you that are out and about in this weather please take care, um, and I hope that you all stay safe. Um, uh, Megan said... Uh, very exciting times coming up for the Seahawks. Yes, Megan is planning her trip overseas. So that's really good. Oh, you got to spend a few hours with your nephew on the uh, yesterday. That's nice, Megan. I saw a few photos. He's so adorable. Um, that's really nice. It's lovely to spend that family time, especially with the little ones too, isn't it? So that's really good. What else did everybody else get up to? Did you do some crafting? We, um, Laurie said, yes, we're, we are to get some rain tonight and tomorrow. Oh, stay safe, Laurie. We've had a lot of floods over here, Laurie, um, all down the east coast of Australia. Um, we've had a lot of flooding happening. We've had com um, towns that have been completely submerged and all sorts of things. Here in Sydney, we've had, uh, we've got a lot of roads cut because um, of flood waters. Our rivers are overflowing and our creeks and everything too, so... Lots of people have been affected by that at the moment, which is very sad. Um, Roz said, mudge squelching through um, the toes walking on the lawn. Yes, yeah, I've been avoiding the lawn. <laughs> um, uh, oh, they said flood watch for you as well. Oh, be careful, take care. Yeah, stay indoors, stay safe. Yeah, 
yeah it's been been pretty hairy down here we've had some family members and I've had some friends affected as well so um, really hard to to see them go through all of that and the mud once the water subsides and the mud that's left behind is disgusting um, and so difficult to clean up so I really feel for all those poor people that are affected but um, yeah so lots of prayers have been sent up over the last few days let me just say um, but we are here to have some fun today so I hope that um, for any of you who may be watching and have been affected know that um, our thoughts and prayers are with you um, but we're going to try and um, lighten the the mood a little bit today and have a little bit of fun um, so on Saturday we had our team gathering every month my my beautiful little team um, we have a team gathering where we get together I update everybody um, on what's happening all the stampin up news and i give recognition of my team members as well for all different sorts of things and i give them um uh gifts and uh gift certificate vouchers and all different sorts of things and every month we also have a creative challenge within our team and so i um every month uh whoever wants to participate posts a photo of their project and I usually have a theme um, they post their project of their card in our little album that we have in the group and then at the end of the month in our team gathering I draw a prize I draw a winner and so that's always a lot of fun so anyway we had a very special and I don't know um, if she's with us yet oh, she is here Deborah's here today so on um, so Deborah's with us today and um, Deborah is one of my beautiful team members and on Saturday during our creative time after the the team meeting portion we always have a bit of creative time together but Deborah um, presented a beautiful project for us it's called a bridge fun fold card and she taught us how to make that so that's what we're going to be making today so I can't wait to um, share that with you it's so awesome um, and this is the card that I made on Saturday with um, Deborah's measurements and all of her and her wonderful instructions she did such a great job teaching us how to make this and all of the team that were um, with us on the day um, made all different ones you should have seen there were so many different ones everyone did um, beautiful projects and some of our team members who weren't able to join us on the day because they were had other commitments they've watched the replay I always send the replay to everybody and um, some of them have made their cards as well using this and the great thing about this fun fold so it, it looks like that it sits up like that so it's a beautiful display and you've got that dimension in it as well so the one I'm doing today is not this one um, it's actually going to be a different one but it's using this bridge fold but these ones actually fold flat well they do fold flat if you get your measurements right what I worked out is I was half a millimeter no one millimeter off with my base so mine actually didn't fold completely flat, but that was that was rookie error. That was my mistake because that was the first time I'd made it. And so today I'm going to attach my bridge a little bit differently to make sure that I get it flat this time. <laughs> so um, the way I'm doing it today, even if your measurements are a little bit off, um, you can actually fix it. So I'm keeping this one as my display one and it's going to go up on my shelf there because I absolutely love it too. And after I photographed it and um, showed the team, I actually added these leaves here as well, which I think just really finished it off. So yeah, oh, we've got lots of hearts going up. That is awesome. So I look forward, and I'm gonna be giving you all the measurements of these to show you how to make it. Now, as I said, they do fold flat, if you get the measurements right, unlike me, which I didn't. <laughs> um, they'll fit into a standard envelope. So um, yeah, uh, so this is one of our Stampin' Up! envelopes. It's a standard size envelope. And these cards, when they lay flat, when you fold them down like that, they actually fit in a standard size envelope. So depending on how much dimension you've got on it though, um, you've got to keep that in mind when you're mailing, because of course I always add lots of dimension. So my cards usually end up costing about $2.20 to send. Um, but if you keep everything really flat, you can send it as a flat rate, $1.10 uh, um, here in Australia. But um, but how cool is that? I love, and it can fold either way. It can fold that way or it can fold the other way. And it still folds down to the same size. So how cool is that? So that's what we're going to be making today. 
and I'm using some um, different products which I'll show you in a moment. So let me catch up back on some of these comments. Um, oh, Megan said they're on flood alert. Uh, oh, you were on flood alert up there in Inverell, but all is okay. Oh, that's good. Good news. Yeah, awesome. Good, good, good. Um, Megan has finished her vision board for her trip overseas. That's awesome. Good job. That's so exciting. Vision boards are awesome, aren't they? They're so much fun to create. Oh, Laurie likes this card. Fantastic. That's good. Um, oh, you haven't learnt that fold yet, Laurie? Well, guess what? You're going to learn it today. And I've got all the measurements. Um, the measurements I've got today, Laurie, though, are in um, metric for our size cardstock. Um, so you can cut it down into our size cardstock for our measurements. Um, but you can also do a conversion into inches as well. So I don't have the inches measurements though. I'm just, just as a precursor, just letting you know, I only have the centimeter measurements for you today. So I apologize, Laurie. Um, hey Rose, how are you? Great to have you with us. All right. Okay. So, um, well, without further ado, how about we tip the camera down and I will show you what we're going to be playing with today. And, um, we're actually playing with some products that are on special at the moment. So I'll tell you about that when I flip the camera down too. But let's get started. So I will get my little, my magic piece of washi tape and I will cover up the camera. Now, as I'm going, if you've got any questions, feel free to pop them in the comments. If I miss them, feel free to ask again, because sometimes they go through so quickly that I miss them. Or if I've got my head down, I'm crafting and I don't look up enough times, I miss them. So feel free just to ask again if you have a question and I miss it. And I'm glad that Deborah's here. So if I muck anything up, Deborah, or I forget a step, feel free to jump in and let me know so that I make sure that I'm doing it correctly. Because as I said, I've only made it once with Deborah's instructions. Well, twice, because I've kind of made the base up ready for today. But um, yeah, anyway, let's get started. So I'll cover up the camera and I'm gonna tip that down and we'll get that all happy and ready to create. Here we go. Oops, oh, my power cord is caught. Hang on a sec, I need that to move with my camera. Otherwise I might lose you part way. All right, I just tighten up all my clamps so it might be a little bit noisy for a sec. I get this all lined up. Okie dokie, let's see how we go. Wait for my camera to catch up and just see. Oh, I got it pretty straight again today. I've been doing well lately, haven't I? Getting it nice and straight first time every time. <laughs> All right. So any of the products that I'm sharing with you today, if you are looking for those, you can find them in my online store. And if you go to my blog, which is mandyspapercraftcreations.blogspot.com, click on the shop button at the top when you'll, you'll see that up there on the top of my um blog page or my home page um, and that'll take you straight through to my online store this is my host code for March 2022 so if you're shopping with me be sure to use my host code um, all orders receive a thank you card from me and if your order is over $50 you'll also receive a thank you gift for me just to show my appreciation for choosing me as your demonstrator Oh, hi, Athena. How are you going? Hi, Fee. Fee's here too. Wow, we've got lots jumping on today. It's awesome. It's great to have some of my team members here as well as my friends, my customers. It's great to have you all here today. All right. So before we get started, the pro products that we're going to be using today are actually on special, So, um, which is super, super cool. So we've got this promotion running at the moment. It's called Savings Are In Bloom and it runs for the entire month of March. And um, the mini stamp and cut and emboss machine, which we're going to be playing with today, is actually on special at 20% off. Now that comes down to a really amazing price of $83. Um, for those of you who are customers for demonstrators, of course, we get our discount on top of that So uh, we get that even at a bigger discount So and it is a product that you can put into a starter kit as well So if you are interested in getting an ongoing discount um, on your Stampin' Up! products and um, You would like to um, Join my team at this time you can pop this mini Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine 
in your starter kit at the discounted price and then get an ongoing discount as well on all of your supplies. Um, so I'll talk more about that in a moment. But we also have 13 different coordinating um, die and stamp set bundles which are compatible with the mini machine that are also on special for 20% discount or they're discounted by 20%. So there's 13 different ones there and today we're going to be using the Garden Wishes bundle. So it's this beautiful stamp set and these are the coordinating dies. So it's the, the Dandy Wishes dies. So this is a great bundle. We've got dies that cut out the um, stamped images, including the little buzzy bee. And then we've got additional dies as well, additional leaves, additional dandelions and flowers and grass. Always great to have grass. Um, I love grass dies because you can use them on so many different projects. We've got the little buzzy bees, um, their little flight path that you can emboss into your cardstock as well. We've got um, these little ones here. These can make flowers, dandelions. Um, you can even use them for sun, for the sun, or you can layer them on top of this one and make um, a 3D dandelion as well. So lots of great dies in that set. As I said, they're um, on special at the moment, 20% discount. So um, normally you would pay $99 for that bundle. Currently, it's reduced to $79. That's a saving of $20 on um, that bundle, which is super awesome. So that's the one we're going to be playing with today. All right. So that's super exciting. Now, I was going to tell you a little bit more, as I mentioned, about um, joining my team. If you like any of these products that are on special, you can put them into your starter kit at the discounted price. Um, now, if you join... At the moment, we also still have running Celebration. So not only can you get those at the discounted price in your kit, but also too, um, you will also get at the moment two additional free stamp sets of your choice included into your starter kit. So you can choose up to $235 worth of product to put into your starter kit, including any of these sale items if you like those. Um, you only pay $169, plus then you get to choose two free stamp sets, any stamp sets that are available, you get to choose those, apart from the celebration ones themselves and um, the host reward stamp sets, but any other ones you can choose. So you can choose the most expensive one if you want to. And you get those two free stamp sets as well, and free postage, and then you'll get um, on an ongoing 20% discount on all of your Stampin' Up! products. And you can actually build that up to 25% over time as well. So, so many great bargains and specials. Great way to maximize your value and get the, um, the most um, for your dollar. So keep those things in mind. If you would like more information about joining my awesome team, we are called the Papercraft Gems. Um, and every one of my Papercraft Gems are um, precious and valued and I love all of them and we have such a beautiful team beautiful team community and we have so much fun together too so if you would like more information about joining my team um, celebration is it says on the catalog on the brochure I should say to the 28th of February but here in the South Pacific so Australia and New Zealand it's actually been extended to the 16th of March so you've still got a week and two days to join during the celebration promotion and get those two additional free stamp sets if you would like to do that. So if you'd like more information, feel free to get in contact with me, ask me any questions that you might have. Um, but if you would like to just go ahead and join, you can find a join link on my blog as well. So if you go straight through to my blog there, then you'll see a join button at the top and you can click on that and that'll take you straight through to the information about joining and um, through the process. and But I'm happy to help you as well if you need any help um, with the joining process. Okay, so that's a little bit about what's happening. Now, let's have another look at this um, awesome fun fold card. So this is called a bridge card or a bridge fun fold card because we've got this bridge across here. Now you can decorate this in any way that you like. Um, I'm going to show you how to put together the, um, the basics of the card and then you can use whatever you like 
for your designer series paper, for all your embellishing. And then there's a little panel on the back here that you can write your message on. And you can fold that flat to write your message on as well. So um, you don't have to worry about, because at first I thought, oh no, do I stick that on straight away? Or how am I going to write on it? And then I realized, oh no, it folds flat, so I'll still be able to write on it. Okay, so that's what we're going to be making. Um, uh, oh, Megan said she's back to her 25% demonstrator discount. Um, so she's giving this offer serious thought and consideration. Yes, it's a great time, Megan, because as demonstrators, um, for those of you who aren't demonstrators yet, we get our demonstrator discount on any promotion. So we get added, added discount, which is super awesome. We get more for our dollar. So that's why it's a great, it's a great um, benefit to join Stampin' Up! because you just get so many um, additional um, savings. All right, so we are going to be using today some of the In Good Taste Designer Series paper. And you'll see when I turn my packet over, this is one of our favorite packs of paper. So both mine and Amber's. Um, those of you who watch me regularly know that Amber is my daughter and also works as my assistant. So we design a lot with this paper, as you can see. Um, I've chopped up lots of it, but you've got so many great textures in here. Wood textures, tile textures, paint textures um, in a couple of different colors as well. Um, lots of great tiles and all sorts of things but today we're going to use this one now they do come in 12 by 12 sheets but of course I have already chopped into mine we're going to be using this one because I really liked this one I thought it looks like a, um, a retaining wall we have retaining walls here at our house because we're on um, sloped land so we have a retaining wall it looks quite similar to this and this is what this one reminds me of so we're using this one today um, I've already pre-cut mine, but I'm going to show you how to um, do all of these cuts. And we're just using two colours of cardstock today. Whoops! And there goes one of my Stampin' Blends. So hang on one sec. I'll see if I can just pick that up. It's very tricky to pick up things off the floor for me at the moment because I can't bend. There we go. Got it. Okay. We are using... Well, actually, we're using two main colours. So I've got a few bits here already chopped up we're using gray granite and i've got thick basic white because we're going to be doing some um, coloring with stamp and blends and then i've just got two colors of green that we're going to be using i've got mossy meadow and garden green and i'll show you what we're going to be using those for and you just need scraps of those ones if you want to make your card exactly the same as mine um, but you might decide to de um, decorate yours differently as I said, our team did such a great job and they had so many different um, designs that they used. All right, let me show you how to make the basics of this card. All right, so there's a few pieces that you'll need. The first thing that you're going to need is your card base. Okay, so this is your card base. Um, I've just cut a template out of um, basic white. So you're going to need a piece of basic white. I'm just moving over to the middle. You'll need a piece of basic white which measure, measures 21 centimetres long and 11 centimetres high. Okay, so 21 by 11. That's your base. Then what you're going to do is you're going to score it from the left side. You're going to score it in at 3 centimetres and then you're going to score it again at 6 centimetres. Then you're going to flip it around and you're going to do the same from the other end. You're going to score it at three, score it at six. Okay, so when you're doing that, let me just have a look here on my, I'll just bring in my trimmer. I'll show you. Okay, so move the cutting blade out of the way. Your scoring blade is the light grey blade. The dark blade is your cutting blade. So we're going to move the cutting blade out of the way so that we don't, cut by accident you're going to pop this in and you're going to measure here at three centimeters all right so you're going to measure that at three centimeters and you're going to use that gray blade to score your cardstock okay then you're going to move that across to six centimeters and you're going to do the same and you're going to score that okay once you've done that take your cardstock out flip it around 
I actually did it at the other end first, didn't I? But that's okay. You're going to do the same thing. Measure from the end three centimetres and score. And then you're going to measure at six centimetres and score. Okay. Hey, Nola. How are you going? Hey, Julie. How are you going? Great to have you here, ladies. Okay. So that's that's the basis of your um, your card base. So then you will end up with this, okay? So you've got those, see those score marks there? Then what you're going to do is you're going to fold that first one in and then the second one you're going to fold back, okay? So the, the inner fold, you're going to fold that over and then that little portion there, the little three centimetre portion, you're going to fold it back on itself. So it ends up like that. Okay, so it sort of opens a little bit like a concertina. Hi, Eileen. How are you? Great to have you with us. I'm so glad you found me today. Yep, so that's that's how it um, opens. Okay. Now, some other pieces that you're going to need are you're going to need your bridge. So this is the piece that's going to go across the front here that will hold your card up like that. Okay, so the, the length of the bridge that you're going to need is 15 centimetres, but the height of it you can have between 2 and 4 centimetres depending on how you want to embellish at the front, how high your sentiment is, if you want to put a sentiment on there. Um, yep, yeah. and... Um, Oh, sorry, Amber, it's just, I just saw your um, comment there, Megan, and Amber is um, replying to you. Thank you, Amber. Um, yes, so I've cut mine at three centimetres. I found that was the a good width for me, a good height for me for what I wanted. Um, but if you wanted a little bit more, if you want it four centimetres, I wouldn't go any higher than four centimetres because depending on how you're going to decorate the back portion here, um, you don't want to cover up too much of that. So if you had your bridge too high, you'd be covering up too much of that background there. Um, so with your bridge, you can choose to put it um, anywhere you like. So I've got mine up um, a little bit from the bottom, about half a centimetre. You can put it up a bit higher. You can put it right across the middle, just depending on what your... Or you can put it right down to the bottom, which is what I'm going to be doing today. Um, so it depends on how you want to decorate it. So, so my bridge is 15 by 3, but yours might be between 2 and 4 centimetres high. Okay, so we've got, um, that's my, my bridge, and I've done that in the same colour. Okay, so that's our cardstock. Now, you'll need a panel for the back to attach onto the back to write your um, message. So the message panel you need is 8.5 centimetres by 10.5 centimeters okay and that'll be your message panel for on the back and that'll give you a nice little border around the edges so you can still see that nice color of cardstock there okay so you need that piece then you'll need your designer series paper to do your decorating so your designer series paper is going to measure 10 centimeters high by 13.5 centimeters wide Okay, so 13.5 centimetres this way and 10.5 centimetres this way. Then what you're going to do is you're going to cut it at 2.5 centimetres on each end. Now when you're um, looking at your designer series paper and you're going to cut that, just be aware if you've got a pattern that might be directional. So for instance, I'll show you what I mean. So for instance, my paper that I had here in the background, you can see that mine is directional because the flowers sort of seem to be coming up from the bottom and we've got the butterflies. If I had have cut it the other way, the butterflies would be flying down, downwards rather than upwards. So just have a look at your design before you, um, you do that. But you want that to be 10 centimetres high. Okay. Then when you cut those sections there at 2 centimeter, 2.5 centimetres from each end, that'll give you a piece for the back there and a piece for each of these strips. Now if you want to do what I've done and add an extra strip in here, 
then you just need another 2.5 centimeter strip or two 2.5 centimeter strips if you want to do each of the inside okay um, you'll notice that I've used two different designer series papers they were from the um, symbols of fortune designer series paper they came from the same paper pack so I knew that they would coordinate um, so I used the one that matched the background in this panel here and then I used a different panel for the front that was going to coordinate with what I was embellishing okay all right so that's or let me lay all these pieces out now for you so you can see so you need your card base, okay, you need your bridge, I'll move that over a little bit, hang on, let me move my stamps out of the way, there we go. So you've got your card stock base, your bridge, your back piece and your designer series paper. Can you see that designer series paper there? Can you see all that there? I'll move it all over so you can get if you want to take a screenshot of that feel free to grab a screenshot so that you've got all of the the pieces and then of course you're going to need um some a stamp set um dies or punches or whatever and anything that you wanted to embellish sorry i'm just trying to get these all in camera shots so that you can get a a um screenshot there is that is that good is that all in there we go okay Alrighty, so let me show you how we're going to put this together now. Right, there we go. Okay, I might actually just pop this back in the packet so I've got it all together. Otherwise, if I just chuck it in my tub, I'm going to lose all the pieces and then I'll be wondering where they all are. There we go. Okay, now we're going to be just using some Memento um, Tuxedo Black Ink for all of our stamping. I'm using some Granny Apple Green just for around my um, sentiment label and I'm using some Stampin' Blends today. So I've got um, my Granny Apple Green Stampin' Blends in the light and dark. I've got my Daffodil Delight in the light and dark. Oops, that one's upside down. I've got um, Light Grey Granite, which is the same colour as my card base. And then I've got one of the new natural tone blends, which is um, number 400. That's for the center of my dandelion. Hey, Jenny, how you going? Oh, Jenny, you'll love the card we're making today. We're making a fun fold card. It's this one here. And I've just given all the measurements with a template. So when I finish, feel free to go back and grab a screenshot of the, um, the template if you would like to learn how to make a bridge fold card. If you haven't made one before, maybe you have. Oh, hey, Tina Marie, how are you going? That's okay. No worries. It's great to have you here. Um, okay, let me just scroll back and see if I have missed anything. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Yep, so Megan was asking if this card would work with the Hey Sports Fan Suite. Yes, it will work with any suite. Um, it'll work with any stamp set. Um, yeah, just it's just up to you how you decorate it. So, okay, so they're the inks that we're using. So we'll move those over to the side. And we're going to start with a little bit of stamping. So I've got, well, actually, I'll show you my, um, I showed you my card base. So I've got grey granite and that's my bridge. And then for the designer series paper, I'm using, um, as I said, the the one that looks like the retaining wall and I'm losing all my little bits here and so what I did is that was my piece was it around that way I'm not sure if I've got that in the right oh, it might have been this way yeah I think it was like that and like that might not have them lined up exactly but there we go something like that um, so that was my full piece which was, let me give you that dimension again, 13.5 um, centimetres by 10.5 centimetres. And then I cut that at 2.5 centimetres on this side. And then you can flip your paper around the other way and take 2 centimetres, 2.5 centimetres off the other end and you end up with three strips like that. Now I went ahead and cut an additional strip as well that I am going to be able to lay on 
my bridge. So you can just have your bridge just as cardstock. And if you're putting a lot of um, embellishing on it and things like that, you might not need to add designer series paper. But I decided to add a little strip of designer series paper to my bridge as well. So that is 14.6 um, centimetres long by 2.6 centimetres high. Okay. I didn't actually write down the... Um, I didn't give you a template for that because that's just an additional piece if you want to. All right, so they're all my pieces that I have. Now, um, we can put together our um, designer series paper onto our base and then we're going to do some stamping, but we're not going to add the bridge yet because we're going to be adding some other elements first. All right, but what I'll do is I'll start putting these together and I'll just show you how we're going to do that. So I'll bring in my grid paper just to keep the glue off my um, off my desktop. Okay. Um, the first thing I'm going to do actually is to adhere this piece of designer series paper to my um, to my bridge. Um, Multi-purpose liquid glue I found when we were doing this on Saturday, when Deborah was showing us how to do this on Saturday, I found the multi-purpose liquid glue was the best one to use because um, you had that wiggle, that wiggle room because we're adding a lot of different um, panels and things. There we go. So I'm just going to add that to my bridge, but I'm not going to add my bridge yet. We're going to add that later. Okay, so don't add that too soon because you need to be able to do all your other um, embellishing on the inside of your card first. But we'll just get this ready for later. Okay, so that's the first step done. And now let's add, so this piece here, we're going to add to the inside of our card. There we go. So make sure that sometimes with some of these bricks, they look like they're, yeah, it goes that way. They are a little bit directional because of the shadows on them. So you make sure they look like they're um, up the right way. There we go. So we're going to pop that down there in the center. Now my next panel, I'm going to leave that plain this time. On my original one, I put paper in there and then I had a different paper on the outside, but I'm actually leaving this one blank this time. And I'm just using these two pieces on the outside. Now I wanted to match them up to make sure that they looked like they were the matched up piece. I think that one's right. This one's probably around the wrong way. Let's see. That looks pretty good like that. Okay, so then we'll attach these to the outer panel. So who else has made a bridge card before? I know my team members that are here have done them. Because we did them on the weekend although some of my team members weren't able to come as I said um, and if they haven't seen the replay yet they might not have made one yet there we go okay and do this one on the other end that over a little bit so I've got the um, part where I'm gluing over the paper because I'm trying to avoid getting it on my desk as I said there we go okay so that's the basis of our card okay so it's going to sit up like that and then the bridge will go across like that and I'm putting the bridge right at the bottom this time but we're not putting the bridge on just yet okay because we're going to do some decorating in here first um, now for your panel for the back, um, let me see, did I actually cut that? Oh, I think I didn't cut my extra piece for the back yet. I think I better do that. Now, let me, I've just got sticky fingers. I'm trying to get the glue off my fingers. Hang on one sec. Get that glue off my fingers so that I can cut my back panel. All right, so I'll do that now because I forgot to do that bit. Move that over. But we don't want to stick the back panel on yet either um, if we're going to do some stamping on it. Can't see the bottom of the card with the bridge. Okay, no worries. I will move everything um, in a moment. I think my, I actually think my stand has dropped and that's probably why. Two secs and I'll just 
readjust my stand. Close your eyes if you get seasick <laughs> or motion sick. So I'm just going to bring it up a little bit. I think it dropped and that was the problem. All right, I'll just get that. When you said that, I looked up and I thought, ah, that's come down. How's that now? Is that, is that zoom it out a little bit more? Oh, that's a bit better. And is that straight? I'll just move that so I can see if that's, it's not completely straight, but it's not too bad. Is that okay? How's that? Now we can probably, if I put those there like that, can you see that, see it all now? Is that better? There we go. That gives a little bit more space to work with, doesn't it? Thanks for letting me know, Tina. Sorry, it's still not straight though. I'm trying to work out which way I need to go. Is it that way or the other way? Ah, oh, that's better. There we go. Okay, good. Thank you for letting me know. I wouldn't have realised it unless I looked up. <laughs> Unless you had have said, I probably wouldn't have looked up. Okay, so um, cutting the back panel. The back panel, my message panel is 10.5 by 8.5. So let's go 8.5 first. 8.5. And we're going to cut with our dark blade by 10.5. There we go. So now we've got that piece ready to um, stamp on. And then once we've done any, any stamping that you want to do on that piece, before um, you must do with that before you adhere that to the back. Okay? Alrighty. Move those ones out of the way. Okay, good. Good, good, good. All right, so we've got all of that done, ready to go. Now we're going to do some stamping of all of our embellishing first before we put all of this together. Okay, so let's just pop that to the side for the moment. And we will bring in our cardstock to do some stamping. Now I'm using um, thick basic white today because I um, am going to be doing some colouring with some Stampin' Blends. So I'm going to be using one of these, two of these and some bees. Okay, so let's um, get my memento ink out ready. And let's stamp up the big um, dandelions first. Now, because it's a large stamp and we're using the Memento ink, which is an, um, it's a linen pad, I like to turn my stamp face up because it's a large stamp. And I'm going to rub my ink over my stamp first to help it to adhere. And then I'm going to tap, 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 which will give a smooth surface of ink. There we go. And then we're just going to stamp that onto our thick basic white. Beautiful. Look at that. So cute. All right. Um, I'll clean that one in a moment. We're going to do um, some dandelions as well. These are the ones we, when we were kids, we used to call these Santa Clauses. I don't know why, because they were soft and wispy, I suppose. We used to love to blow the um, the little fluffy bits off them. I don't actually know what the fluffy bits are called. Does anybody know what those fluffy bits are called? Do they actually have a name? We'd call them Father Christmases or Santa Clauses, but that's I don't know why we actually called them that. <laughs> Heaps better. Oh, good. I'm glad you can see a bit better now. All right, and then we're going to stamp a few of the little bees as well. Now, we're going to die cut all of this. But we're going to um, colour them first. So I'm just going to stamp a couple of the little buzzy bees down here. Let's just do three. Okay. And um, you can stamp your sentiment as well. So you just need a scrap for your sentiment. I've got a little scrap here for my sentiment. Um, now my original one, um, I just stamped it and then cut it down to the size that I wanted it. And it depends on the sentiment that you're using. But I wanted to make a thank you card. So I'll stamp that sentiment now and then I can cut that down I'll do the same thing. I'm just going to do a, a rub, 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 and then a tap, tap, tap. 
I inked up my memento today too. So I'm going to stamp this down near the bottom and over to the left side so then I can trim around that with my trimmer. Okay, so that's all the stamping. Now we do have this piece as well. This is our back panel. So if you want to do a little bit of stamping on that too, let's just pop these ones to the side for a sec. Now you want that ink to dry a little bit before you um, color with your stamp and blends. Now let me just see if I put, that would be cute if I just put that going off the bottom there. Let's do that. Rub, 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 tap, tap, tap. I have that just going off the bottom there, like so. Oh, that's really cute. And then I might put a little bee up the top as well in the opposite corner. There we go. Beautiful. So that's my back panel. Um, I'm not going to put a sentiment on the back panel because I'm going to have that sentiment on the front and there's not much room to write there. And I usually like to write a lot. So um, I'm just going to leave that as it is. But that is ready to attach to the back. Um, so depending on wait, which way up are my blocks. Yep, that way. So if you wanted to, you could attach that now. Um, yep, I think I'll do that. Will I put a bit of ink around the edge? I might run a little bit of Granny Apple Green ink just around the edge. And I'm going to do that in a really easy way today. Rather than get my daubers out, I am just going to tap my cardstock on the edge of my, or the edge of my cardstock, I should say, on my ink pad, just to get a little bit of ink around the edges, just to add a tiny little gentle soft border. Well, it's not that soft actually, this comes out quite dark, but just gives me a little bit of a an oomph on the side of my cardstock. There we go. There we go. So if you wanted to, you could color those in. Um, we might actually do that before we adhere that on. We'll let that ink dry for a little bit. I'll pop that over to the side so we won't adhere it yet. We'll let that dry before we stick that on. All right. So then let's clean all our stamps now before we move on because we don't want to leave that ink sitting. Oh, what am I doing? That's the wrong one. <laughs> wrong case. That's the stamp case. This is the chamois case. You're going to pick up the right, the right case. So I'll just ink off some of this ink first and we'll give our stamps a clean. As I always say, it's a good idea to clean your stamps straight away. Keep them in good condition. And it also minimizes staining on your stamps. And test them if they're clean. I love this little bee stamp, it's so super cute. There we go. Oh, Roz said, um, yes, uh, with the dandelions. She said they are the seeds. They're um, called Santa Claus because they came out around Christmas. Oh, is that why we call them that? Thank you, Roz. I didn't know that. Oh, there you go. Oh, Rose said we call them TikToks. They are the seeds. Oh, there you go. Down in Tassie, they call them the TikToks. Huh, I never knew that. Um, Tina said, oh, yes, we called them Santa Claus too. She'd forgotten that. Yeah. Um, Megan's goddaughter calls them fairy kisses. Oh, that's so cute. I love that too. Nice. Beautiful. Well, there you go. We've all got different names for them. Okay, so let's move all of these pieces. I keep on moving all of my pieces around my desk. I'm trying to make space for everything. Oh, I'm suddenly very hot. It's um, warming up down here in my craft room. Alrighty, so what I did, because we want that ink to be really dry, I did go ahead and prepare some earlier, apart from my back panel, which I'm setting that aside till later to dry. Um, but I went ahead and I stamped a whole heap of these um, earlier to make sure that they were dry in time for me to colour them today with you. Okay, so, and I stamped some extras too, just in case. Okay, so we've got all of our beautiful Stampin' Blends here. 
So let's start with our little Santa Clauses. So as I said to you, um, I'm going to use the Natural Tone Blend number 400, okay? So I'll hold that up to the camera if the camera can focus on that. So that's number 400. I'm just using that for the center of the um, Santa Clauses because if you have a look at them, they're actually um, brown in the centers and at the, the base of those seed pods, they're actually brown. Depending of the stage um, that it's at, whether it's, um, I've seen photos of the different stages of these flowers or these seed pods. And um, yeah, sometimes they can look a bit greeny in the center. And then when they get really old, they go brown. Um, now I'm just using a light gray granite. We know that the little wispy bits, the little um, soft parts are actually white, but I wanted to give them a little bit of color but without making them too heavy. I'm actually going to turn this around because I'm getting very hot and sweaty and I don't want to um, lean on my ink and smudge it. So I'm just giving just a little bit of colour. So just going around using the bullet tip of my Stampin' Blends there. And then there's all these little dots. So I'm just going to go and dot those around just very lightly with my blend. Don't want to do too much. There we go. And we'll just do the same on this one. I need two of these. So you might not be able to tell on camera, but it does just change the color a little bit, just from being stark white to just giving it a little bit of color. And then once we've colored these, we're gonna die cut them for our card. There we go. Okay, and now we'll do the leaves. So I'll turn them back around. Oh, I'm melting. Wait, where's my fan? Get my little fan. I always keep a little fan by my desk. Do you all do that? Do you keep a fan by your desk? Or maybe you have a desk fan. <laughs> I wish I had a desk fan, but I don't have. And, um, Sometimes I just need to cool down a little bit. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is the stem and the leaves, and we're just going to use our Granny Apple Green. So I'm going to use my dark first. And I'll just put a little bit of color on the stem, not too much, not too much of the dark, and then on the leaves as well. Here we go. We've got more rain coming down here at the moment, but it's really humid. There we go. So we're just going to do one at a time because we want that um, we want that ink to still be wet when we come in to blend with our light color. Um, if they dry out between colors, if you try and color a large section and the color that you used previously dries out, it makes it really hard to blend them together. So you want that first layer to still be wet so that you can blend them really well. So I'm just using my bullet tip today um, because I'm coloring in smaller um, stamped images. Sometimes if I'm coloring and I'm using, I'm coloring a large section, I'll use the brush tip, but either will blend. And I don't wanna blend it completely because I want to still have definition in the leaves as well. So I want there to be a little bit of um, light and dark tone in there. There we go. Okay, so that's the first one. So then we can do the second one. We'll do the same. Just a little bit down the stem. A little bit just on the veins of those leaves and then just color. Oh, no worries, Megan. Are you gonna catch me on the replay? Awesome, okay, you have a great afternoon. Oh, wrong one, this one, I've done that one. There we go. There we go, alrighty. I'm 
and just color those blend that color in a little bit beautiful so we want to blend it enough so that we've still got the tone but we don't want to blend it all the way down and have it um, have the color sort of taken out of it or like the depth of color taken out of it there we go okay and then we're going to color um, our dandelions over here and we're going to use daffodil light and dark so with the the um, dandelion flowers what I did is I just went with my dark first I went in the center made the center a bit deeper and then I just did little strokes with the dark here and there okay and I can do the little one as well because I can work quickly with these and then with this one I colored these bits at the bottom dark and then just a little bit of dark just here like that okay so that's just how I've done the dark and now I'll go over that with the light so I love the Stampin' Blends they're really really easy to work with in fact with the large flower we can use our brush tip and we can just go over that and then you'll get um, depth of color because you've got the light and the dark in there and so that'll be um, give you a really good tone there we go I'll just need to change um, back to the dark for a moment because I missed these little bits in here there we go all right so then what you're going to do is color the leaves the same way as what we did for these ones okay I've prepared one ahead of time so I won't go and do those ones as well because that one takes a little bit of time um, but then with our little bees, uh, I used the Dark Daffodil Delight. Hey, Cameron, how are you? It's good to have you here. All right, so then we just colour these in. So we just do that with the bees, just do their heads and their little stripes. I'm going to leave the wings clear because I'm going to add Wink of Stella to those later. Okay, so you can just colour three of those. Then what you're going to do is put them through um, the stamp and cut and emboss machine. So let's just, what I'm going to do is I'll cut out, I'll show you with this one. There we go. We'll cut that out and we'll cut out one of the little bees as well. Oh, you got a moustache, Cameron. Very nice. Looking good, very handsome. <laughs> I love it when Cameron comes on and he talks to me. There we go. All right, so now we're going to bring in our mini machine. Now, as I said, um, the mini machine is the mini stamp and cut and emboss machine is on sale at the moment at 20% discount. So it's down to $83, um, normally $104. So you're saving $21, that's right, $21. Um, yes, that's right. I was just, <laughs> just second guessing myself. Um, it's really small and compact. As you saw, I had the sides folded up. It's really small and compact. It's nice and lightweight to carry, but it's got enough weight in it that you know that it's strong internally. The, ins the inside working parts um, are all stainless steel, so they're all really strong. You've got rubber feet on the bottom, which help to hold it in place. Um, however, because it's a, a little machine, it sometimes can slip around a little bit, so it's always a good idea to hold onto that handle at the top there um, when you're using it. But then you just open up the sides here and you can see it doesn't take up much space. It comes with all the plates that you need and um, even for the embossing folders as well, the adapter plates for the embossing folders, it comes with all of those that you need um, to get started. And all of the plates are numbered. So you'll see here, this is the base plate and these are the two cutting plates and they're all numbered and all the instructions are on the plates, on the base plates to show you how to do it and on the embossing folder ones as well they're gray there's a light gray and a dark gray um, it gives you the instructions of which ones to use and how to layer together what we call our sandwich 
All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to put these together. Now, when you're doing your plates, I mentioned this last week, um, stagger your plates a little bit like that, okay? Don't line them all up together squarely at the end because what happens is, well, mine are a little bit bowed because I've used mine so many. I need to replace this bottom one soon. Um, what happens is it makes the end too square and it can make it a bit hard for the machine to grab them, to feed them through. So if you just stagger them back a little bit like that, because each edge is beveled, um, it makes it easier for the machine to be able to grab hold of them to um, feed them through. So that's just a little tip for you. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to add our dandelion. We're going to bring in our awesome dies and we're going to die cut one of these dandelions. Now I'm going to use a little bit of washi tape just to hold that in place so that it doesn't move around when I am um, cutting. We are getting some magnetic plates that'll be coming at some stage soon. We hope that they'll be um, coming around about the time that the um, annual catalogue will be launching. Hopefully the, the um, magnetic plates will be ready in time for that. And there'll be a magnetic plate for the mini and for the large machine as well. So we are very much looking forward to that. So then we're going to die cut one of the bees as well and put them both on the plate together using those awesome dies. And remember these, this stamp set and die bundle is also on special at the moment for at a 20% discount. Okay, so then we'll just wind that through. Whoops, I'm taking my sign with it. Okay, and then we've got our cute little dandelion. So you'll do the same with the other bee and also with um, the other flowers. So I went ahead and did that ahead of time just to save a little bit of time today. I just wanted to quickly show you how you can use those dies with the mini machine. And as I said, all of these dies coordinate with the mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. They'll all fit through it. So it might be tiny, it might be a mini, but it's mighty. It's what we like to call the Mighty Mini. Okay, there's our other little bee. All right. Um, the, clear, the clear plates as well, you can purchase replacement plates if you need to over time. They do um, wear over time and they can become a little bit warped. Um, so when they sort of get too, too um, very much used, then you can just replace them um, with a new set. Or I usually just replace one at a time. Usually it's the one that's on the bottom that warps first. And then I replace that one with a new one, uh, with, a, with the old one that I had on top. And then I put a new one on the very top. Um, but yeah, so you can get replacement plates for them if you need to. Um, the best thing to do when you're using your plates is to keep flipping them over and use the different sides of them and use different portions of them too. Don't always put your die just in the middle because it'll warp very quickly. But if you try and use the different sections of your plates, um, that'll help to alleviate the, um, the bowing and the warping of your plates. All right, so I also took some, now where is it? Here we go. I also took some um, garden green and some mossy meadow and I also cut out some grass in, so this is the grass die. There's a long one and there's a small one. So I went ahead and I cut out some of those as well and in the garden green I cut some of these dandelion leaves as well okay so I cut out a whole heap of those um, ahead of time just to save a little bit of time so same thing um, you just put your dies down run them through your machine and they'll cut out for you beautifully okay and you should only need to run them through once through your machine they cut out really well okay so now these are all my pieces Pop that to the side. These are all my pieces that I prepared ahead of time. And I think I, I think I actually prepared a few extras as well, just in case. Oh, and there's another, another grass. So I did a sentiment label as well. I pre-cut that. And I've got two 
of the dandelions. Now the one I just cut today I prefer to that one because that one I took the brown out a little bit too far from the center and this one matches more with that one so I'll use that one. Um, this one is the one that I prepared earlier so you can see I colored the leaves in the same way that I showed you how to color those ones and I've got three little buzzy bees. I had an extra one there. Oh, there's another one. There's a fourth one now because I just made another one. And I've got all of these bits cut. I've got lots of the dandelion leaves cut in the garden green. And I've got some different grass pieces cut in the mossy meadow as well. And I'm using some linen trim today um, for a little bow because every card needs ribbon and bling or twine and bling. So I've got some bling I mean I've got my twine or my ribbon and for my bling I'm actually going to be using some of the pebbles enamel shapes because I thought they're going to go perfectly with this card um, Tina said I'll be getting a magnetic plate it will rock my die cutting world <laughs> it sure will <laughs> it'll make things so much easier we won't have to keep using all that washi tape alrighty um, now the one thing I didn't do is I was going to color these so I just remembered that I'll quickly give them a little quick color I'll do that really quick and and then that way I'll have that ready to adhere down as well nearly forgot that one I could have left them just um, just black on the back it wouldn't have mattered but let's add a little bit of color onto the back as well so just add those little spotty spots. Spot, spot, spot. There's a spot over here and a spot over there. Reminds me of that play school song. <laughs> Do you all know that one? For those of you that are here in Australia, those of you who aren't from Australia who are watching from overseas play school is a children's um, educational program that's been running for like forever it's been running since before I was a child even and um, it's a great show and a lot of the um, presenters on there go on to do a lot of work in um, film here in Australia so yeah it's a good launch pad for a lot of those people but it's a really great program my kids grew up with it. I grew up with it. There we go. Okay. And then we can add a little bit of Wink of Stella later to the um, little bee's wings. Okay. So that panel's ready to put on the back. Alrighty. So now we are ready to put together our card. All right. Now I have this pre-planned. Okay. So I'm not flying by the seat of my pants today as I have been doing the last couple of weeks. So we shouldn't it shouldn't take, hopefully, too long. Famous last words. <laughs> but I already have a plan of where I'm putting everything. So let me show you. I'm going to start with the back. And I'm going to do that. Well, actually, before I do that, let me adhere this piece onto the back, onto the very back. I'll do that first. And then we'll play with the inside. So I'll just add a little bit of glue. There we go. And we'll add that to the back panel. Make sure I've got that up the right way. Which way did I want to have it? Oh, which way did I want to have it? Was it that way? Now I've got to check. Is it that way? I think it was that way. Yeah, that way doesn't look right. Yep, that way. Okay, so make sure I've got that up the right way. And I'll adhere this to the back panel. And that's where I'm going to write my little message. And this is going to be a thank you card. So I'll write my little message of thanks on the back there. That'll be cute. Yeah. All right. So we'll turn it back over. And now we're going to embellish the inside. So I'm going to pop this up here. And let me just hide my glue. I am going to be using some um, Stampin' Dimensionals. Now, when you're using Stampin' Dimensionals on one of these cards, you have to keep in mind... Um, about it folding flat okay so if I use dimensionals on that back portion there it's going to actually raise that up which would mean my card wouldn't sit completely flat so if you're not worried if you're hand delivering this and it doesn't need to go through the mail then that would be okay 
um, but if you want it to go through the mail completely flat then keep in mind about that panel there at the back I was planning to pop that up onto dimensionals but I'm second guessing it because I know that that's not going to go flat if I do that so I might just stick that one down flat I think and then I can dimensionalize everything that's on the front okay so before I stick that down I am going to add a couple of these dandelion leaves behind it I'll make sure I've got them around the right way there we go so I'm just going to have one there and one over this side now because you've got all these folds as well sorry I'll just move these and I'll move the card up a bit higher so you can all see it Oop, there we go um, because you've got all these folds you have to be careful that any element that you put on your card doesn't go over the folds because otherwise it's going to get creased and damaged when you go to fold your card up okay so just make sure you stay within those folds and I'm going to do something sort of like that I think what I'll do is I'll attach those to the back of this piece first oopsie so just put a little bit of glue there and attach them first like that and then that will help me to get the height as well that I want but uh, now I also have to check that it's not going to stick out from uh, where that folded edge is I could just move that over a little bit I suppose yeah there we go all right and we'll do the same with the other one um, Oh, Play School and Mary Poppins, Spit Spot, yes. Yes, Tina Marie. I used to love Mary Poppins too. Love that movie. I still love the movie actually. There we go. So we'll pop those there like that. Just not sure if I need a third one. I don't want to add too much. They're the, they're the leaves. Oh, I could put an extra one up there, I suppose, couldn't I? That might be all right. Although, if I leave it there, well, then we've got five. Let me see. Do I like that? Yeah, I think I might put one up there as well. Let's see. How does that look if that's down flat? Yeah, I think I'll put that one there as well. Because I original on my original one, I didn't have one there, but I was like, oh, I think it still needs an extra one, but I couldn't work out where to put it. And then I ran out of time to finish fiddling. So there we go. Okay. So now what we'll do, we've got those attached. I'm going to attach all of this with my glue. And I want that to sit down nice and flat so that my card folds flat. So the important thing is to... Um, do any decorating that you want to do on this inside panel first before you adhere your bridge. Um, have I seen the remake of Mary Poppins? No, I haven't actually, Julie. Have you? Is it good? I don't know. I don't think you can top the original, to be honest. There we go. But never say never. All right, so now we'll just adhere all of that there like that. There we go. Okay, so that's our background um, piece ready to go. Now I'm going to put a little buzzy bee up there too. And I think with the, um, the bee, I can probably put the bee up on dimensionals because that'll be down flat across there. But the little bee, I could pop the bee up on dimensionals. So let's get a little mini dimensional and add that to the bee. Grab my take your pick tool, my trusty take your pick tool. What did we ever do before we had a take your pick tool? I'd be lost without my take your pick tool now. All right, so let's pop a little buzzy bee up there on our dandelion flower, overlapping the leaf there. Cute. Look at that. So cute. All right, so that is all the decorating that I'm doing on the inside panel. Okay, and so now I can attach my bridge. Now, I'm going to do this a different way this time. I'm going to do this um, in a way where I can be sure that it is straight. So I'm going to show you 
um, how to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to attach some glue to one side of the bridge first. So I'm just going to do it on this side. So if I flip that over, I can see where to add my glue. So I don't want to go, you don't want to go with your glue beyond that fold there. Okay. Add plenty of glue. Attach that. Oh, got to make sure I've got that up the right way. Oh, we're going to have to go the other way. We'll go this side. We'll attach it to this side first. Okay. And with this one, I'm going to have it right down to the bottom of the card. Okay, make sure that's lined up. So I'm lining that up with the bottom of my card there. Make sure that's... Now, I haven't attached the other end yet. Okay, so I've got that side attached. Now what we're going to do is we're going to fold in that other side and then that where that's folded in, that's where your other flap is going to attach. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some glue on this panel here. And then that way too, if your bridge is a little bit long, you can trim it off. Okay, so we fold that in. Place this piece down. Make sure everything is pushed down nice and flat so that when your card goes in your envelope, it'll be nice and flat. And then you've got everything lined up there nice and flat. And then you just hold that there for a moment. And I think... We should be good. Okay, all right. And then, very carefully in case the glue is not quite dry, it's going to sit up like that. Okay, so with this one, if I flip that over, I can see I've gone off just a little bit, like not even half a millimetre is a little bit over. So one of my folds must have been a little bit wrong. But if you do it that way, then what you can do is that would probably still fit in an envelope. I'll probably still get away with it. But what you can do is you can just trim off that little excess bit there of um, cardstock. If you've got any overhang, you can just trim that off. So I'm glad I did it this way this time, Deborah, so that I didn't um, I didn't muck it up this time. And now this one sits flat. Yay! <laughs> Look at that. So it can fold either way. It can fold that way or that way. Okay. There we go. All right, so now we've got the bridge on. And as I said, you can pop the bridge anywhere you like, but I wanted to have it at the bottom this time because I want it to look like a wall. Whereas on this one, when I did it, I put it up a little bit from the bottom. So I wanted to be able to see a little bit of the paper at the back. Oh, thanks, Deborah. <laughs> yeah, I got it right this time. Yay. I liked that tip that you gave about doing it that way with it folded down. That's really helpful. All right, so now we can embellish the front. All righty. So what we're going to do is I'm going to pop my... Um, so what I did with my sentiment is I trimmed that down. You saw me stamp an additional one today. This is one I prepared earlier. I trimmed that down and I just dabbed that in my Granny Apple Green ink like I did with this back panel. I just dabbed each edge in my Granny Apple Green ink and then um, now I've got a nice little green border. Now before I add my little green border I'm going to tuck some grass in behind there. So let's see I'm going to have some I'm going to work out how high I want the grass before I attach my sentiment. I'm going to put that about there and then So I can start sticking that down. I work out where I want to have that. So just add a bit of glue there. And then I'll just pop that sentiment back in place. This is another reason why I like the multi-purpose liquid glue. Because you can, um, you've got that wiggle time. So move that over a little bit there. There we go. There like that. Whoops, better put it straight. There we go. Good. And now we'll add the other grass. I'm going to add some thick, some of the tall blades and some of the short blades along there like that. Do that one and we'll do, we'll have another short one and then we'll do another long one. All right. Sorry, I'm not looking at any comments at the moment. I will 
poke my head up in a moment. I just want to get all this grass down. Um, and this one as well. So we'll pop those along there like that. There we go. So they, they're going to sit down behind my sentiment. Okay, so then if you wanted to, you can pop your sentiment up on dimensionals or you can stick it flat. I think I'm going to pop it up. Actually, I'm happy with where that grass is. So I'll pop my sentiment on there. So I'll bring in some Stampin' Dimensionals and my trusty Take Your Pick tool. Now let me see, am I missing any, um, any, do, 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 do. Oh, Tina said that um, when she was making her bridge fold card during our team gathering the other day, um, she put a punch on top to hold the bridge down until it dried. That's a really good tip, actually. That's a great idea to do that. And that way you don't have to stand there and or sit there and hold it till it dries. Okay, so let's pop our sentiment down so the sentiment i'm using is your acts of kindness are like a breath of fresh air i just thought that was such a beautiful um sentiment for a thank you card so just line that up very gently there on our bridge okay cool i like that that's really cute all right and now what we're going to do is we're going to put some dandelions on this side so i'm going to have one up here now you've got to watch Okay, so because this is going to fold flat and it's going to fit into an envelope, you have to make sure that when you are, I don't want to push that too hard till that grass all dries, um, you have to make sure that you don't, if you want it to fit in the envelope, don't have anything overhanging the edges of your card, otherwise it might be a little bit too wide to fit in the envelope once it's folded down. Okay, so just keep an eye on that as you go. All right, so I'm going to add... And also watch the top as well. I'm watching where that dandelion is sitting. I'm going to add one of these down here like that. So I'll get my glue ready. Just lining everything up first before I gluing. Get my glue running. That will be helpful. Come on, glue. There we go. So just line this one up. Make sure it's within the edges. And we can just slide that little leaf in there, like so. Okay, so whoops, so now I know I've got that at the right height. And now I can attach this one. So just check to see where you're, you need your glue, okay, because you don't want to put glue right over the edge piece that's going to be overhanging um, the rest of the card because what will happen is that glue will stay tacky and when you close your card down, it could attach itself to the back of that card. Okay, so you just want to put glue on just that side there. So we'll just put some glue on that side there and on the leaves and the stem. There we go. And move that up there like so. There we go. Okay, so that one's attached in the background. Then we're going to add another leaf to the front here. And that one's going to sit down there like so. Then we're going to add another dandelion. And this time, this one is going to overhang like that. But this one I'm actually going to pop up onto dimensional. So I'm going to use some minis. And I might use some edge pieces on the um, on the stem as well. So we'll just use some minis first. Oop. Hey Megan, how are you going? Great to have you with us. Um, oh, you've been watching and you forgot to say hi. No worries. I didn't even know you were here. But it's great to have you with us. So then I'm going to pop that one there like that have that overhanging so we can put a mini on this side here to hold that secure. And then if we cut some of our edge pieces and I have got 
some I prepared earlier of course <laughs> I keep all of my little edge pieces on a sheet to use for projects such as these so these little edge pieces come from the edges of your stamp and dimensionals um, and I just keep them and chop them up for projects like this so I'm not taking the backing off this one just yet because I want to make sure I've got enough um, support there I might put an extra one up here make sure I've got enough support on that that flower there we go so that one should be good like that yes okay good all right so now we can remove the backings of all of our dimensionals now keep in mind, as I said, when you're adding extra dimension to your cards, they can cost a little bit more to post if you're mailing them, um, especially here in Australia. I'm not sure about how the mail works overseas, but if here in Australia, when they start getting a bit thicker and they don't fit through the slot, then um, the mailing slot, then they cost a little bit more to send. All right, so I want to make sure, I'm feeling where that dimensional is. I want to make sure that that attaches to my other flower Whoop. maybe I should do the top part first actually hang on a sec ah oops lifted that bit up a bit then all right we're getting ourselves into a sticky situation now so I want that dimensional to attach onto there and there now I've got it too far over hang on a sec gently take that off oh look the rest is sticking now too I want this one down here there like that yeah a bit more of an angle like that oh, I think we've got to go back this way a bit there now let's see where did that dimensional end up oh that lower one is a little bit a little bit too far out so that's why it's good not to stick anything too tightly first go because in case you've got to do what I've got to do and take them back off that one's in the wrong spot and I don't want it to get stuck on the back panel of the card so I'll just take that one off we might be right just with one let's see where's that one attaching now yep that one's attaching where I wanted it oh it should be under there actually that's where it should be should be under there oh I think it needed to be down a little bit lower there not that one there there we go let's take that off you can you can actually get these all the way off if you take the time to if you do it carefully without uh, if you just roll it then you don't um, tear the cardstock there we go let's try this one now <laughs> we'll get there we'll get there in the end it's going to make sure that one is um, stable, not going to fall off. Now let's check where we've got that. Oh, keeps on going in the wrong spot. Put that over a little bit there. There we go. I'm just trying to, to make sure that it's not overlapping that flap. So when I put it down flat, it's not going to stick to the back panel. No, that's good. Okay, good. Got it in the right spot now awesome okay so there's that one right now now this is this is obviously sitting off the card so um, it's not as stable there so you just need to treat it carefully um, I could slip an extra little went one probably a little off cut bit under there if I chose to but I think we should be right as long as I push that one on tightly I think we'll be all good all right so the next thing I'm going to do is add a little bee up here so we'll add a little buzzy bee up here. There we go. Oopsie. Just going to add a little bee up here. And then I'm going to add another one down here. Got dimensional backings going everywhere at the moment. I'm going to add another one down here. And then the last thing I was going to do is to add a little bit of grass 
behind here as well. So I'm just working out how much I need to have behind there. Yep, like so. Okay, we're just going to add that to the back of the bridge. Let's just add one there in the middle section. Set the back there like that. Just to add a little bit more dimension with our grass. Love these little grass blades, they're so cute. They're great for lots of projects. I love adding um, lots of texture and there's so many nature, nature themed projects that we can do. And these little blades of grass would be awesome. I'm just making sure I'm lining that up at the back there. Oops. Just be aware that anything you're putting at the back there behind the bridge, make sure that it doesn't have any sticky, any adhesive oozing out. You don't want to use too much adhesive because, again, when you fold that flat, um, you don't want it sticking to the back. So I'm not using too much adhesive. And I'm just going to pop this last little one in here. Like so. There we go, good. And then what we'll do is we will add some bling to our, we're gonna add some Wink of Stella to our bees. We'll pop those bits over there, we didn't need them. And then we're going to add our the rest of our bling and our ribbon. All right, so we'll just add a little bit of bling to the wings of our little bees to give them a little bit of a sparkle. Might be a bit hard to see that on camera. There we go. Make sure that I got all of those. See in the light there. Done. Yep. Good. If you wanted to, you could bling up these as well, but I think I won't. I think I want that blade of grass to go behind. There we go. You could bling these um, dandelions up too, but I don't think I will. And then I'm going to add a little bit of twine because every card needs ribbon and bling. You know, I always say that. Okay, so we'll just get a tiny little bit of glue dot. I'll use my roll to press it on to to roll that into a small ball. So we want this to be very small to go behind our twine. And then let's see which which that side looks nicer. Did you know that when you um, tie a bow, even with your twine, there's one side that always looks nicer than the other? I always have a look to see which way the knot is laying to see which looks better. There we go. So then I'm going to add this to my dandelion. And then you can trim that up. Let's trim that up a little bit. I'll have it a little bit long. We'll separate the fibres on the ends, as I always do. Give a little bit of added texture to our twine. And this end too. Just unravelling that twine too and separating those fibres. So I like like it to look a little bit sort of rustic there like that and then we're going to add in our little pebbles now I forgot I was going to add some inside there um, with the dandelions I forgot to do that before I added this on but again remember that these are a little bit dimensionalized so you don't want to make your card too bulky now let's see I can actually slip them in under here and the reason I wanted to do that is so that when it stands up that that dandelion that's there at the back doesn't look like it's just sort of floating there on its own, like I wanted to cover up um, that part. It just might make it a little bit bulky when I do it, uh, fold it flat. So you just have to be a little bit careful. I think I'm going to use the, um, the basic grey ones because they'll kind of go with the stones. You could use, actually, could use the brown ones too, but I think I'll use the basic grey ones because they'll go more with the um, the stone background. And we're just going to use a few of those. I'm going to sneak them in under here. I'll show you once I've done it. 
just to kind of cover up the bottom of that um, plant so it makes makes it look like that it is actually in a garden I'm just popping them in behind there There we go. So I've just kind of popped them in. I'm not sure how you'll see that on camera. Just popped them in behind there. You kind of see that. Um, so that when you're looking, when you're looking down at the card, it looks like um, they're actually sitting in like a rock garden. And I could continue those across there. I just didn't want to add too much bulk because you've also got to watch where that folds there. So you probably wouldn't want to add them all the way to the edge because then that fold there won't fold all the way down. So I'll probably add maybe one or two more, but I wouldn't want to go underneath that fold because then they wouldn't, um, if you want to fold it that way. If you fold it that way, yeah, if you fold it that way onto the where the little pebbles are, see how that makes it more bulky? Uh, yes, I am going to actually, Amber. Yeah, I'm actually going to add a few to the front bridge as well. But yeah, so I, when I fold my card down, I'll fold it that way so that they don't sort of make it um, too bulky. And then now we'll just add a few along the front here as well. So we'll add some along here to make this part of the garden look like it matches what we've got going on in the background as well. There we go. You can even add in some of the light ones here on the front too, if you wanted to. Make them a little bit, um, a little bit more contrast in that front garden with the two different colours. She could even add one over the. Oh no, I can't because that's mounted up. That's okay. No, don't like that one right there. I move that one over a little bit. She's going to turn it around up the other way. And add that sort of in going in here. There we go. So we'll add them along here. Oops, that one went a bit lower than I had planned. There we go. just a little bit tricky adding them on the front actually if I fold that down I'll probably make it easier for myself I was gonna say it's a little bit tricky trying to do it on the bridge when it's up in the air but if you have them down have it folded down then that makes it a little bit easier there we go I could even tuck a little one in I'm gonna tuck the one in under there a bit it in just under the edge there there we go cool so we've got our bling which is our um, pebbles now if you wanted to you could also add some um, rhinestones if you wanted to but I think I like it just like that what do you think everyone do you like that and it sits up like that and it folds flat yay <laughs> folds flat if I go that way it'll fold nice and flat to go into my card uh, into my envelope I should say so how cool is that so there's the two different cards they sit up like that so that was my original one and that was my today's one so I love that you can use this um, to create a little scene so yeah what do you think you love this version Deborah yeah I think it's my favorite one too it's pretty cute so yeah yeah. Uh, oh, hey, Helen, I didn't even know you were here. Great to have you with us. You love both of these cards. Oh, thank you. Um, Jenny said, could you mirror? Oops, hang on a minute. I just lost that um, comment. Um, could you mirror stamp the bees? Could you mirror stamp the bees and have it on the flower on the side? Yes, you could. You could. Yep. You could definitely do that. Yeah. Um, Amber said she loves a scene card. Yeah, she does. Oh, Jenny said she loves it. Well done. Thanks, Jenny. 
Um, Fee said, looks great. Megan said, this is a super cute card. Now I want this set. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's great because it's on special at the moment, Megan. 20% discount. Um, how is the weather down here? It's been raining and we've had a lot of localized flooding, Megan. It's been pretty crazy. Um, it's actually been pouring quite heavily overnight, last night and the night before. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, back here to Diana said the stone DSP really pops, um, really pops out over the video. Oh, that's good. That's great. It looks, oh, I think it looks really realistic, doesn't it? I really love this one better, more than this one now. Now I want to keep this one and give this one away. <laughs> I love this one best. Maybe I'll have to make a second one so I can keep one and send one. <laughs> um... Just catching up on all your comments here. Beautiful card, Roz said. Diana said, thank you for introducing us to this fold. Well, that was, Diana. That was um, yeah, Deborah. Yeah, thanks, Deborah, so much for teaching us how to make this um, bridge fun fold card. It's a fantastic fold. I think I'm going to use this one a lot. Yeah. Tina Marie loves 3D cards, she said. Yeah. So remember that um, this set that I have used today is on special. So let me just bring that in again to show you. So this is the um, Garden Wishes bundle. It's on special at the moment for 20% um, for off. So, oops, my light's reflecting just there on the stamp case. So this one is 20% off at the moment um, for the month of... March the 1st to the 30th 31st of March so if you love this one and you want to get this one be sure to get that during the special and save yourself 20% so there you go and you can do so much with this stamp set I really love it and the dies are fantastic so there you go. So if you're looking for this, um, if you shop with me, um, go over to my blog at mandyspapercraftcreations.blogspot.com and click on my shop link. And remember to use my host code as well so that I can send you a um, thank you gift with an order over $50. Um, now also too, if you are over there on my blog, be sure to click on my newsletter um, link as well and subscribe to my newsletter so that I can keep you up to date with all the latest Stampin' Up! news, all the specials. Um, I put creative content on there as well. So be sure to, um, if you're not already signed up for my newsletter, be sure to sign up there for my newsletter. But thanks again so much to Deborah for teaching us this wonderful fun fold card, the bridge, the bridge card. We love it in our team and um, I can't wait to make some more. So there you go. There's my beautiful card for today. All right. So I will flip the camera up. Oh, and just to show you again, here's the envelope, which I haven't yet stamped on. And I will stamp some of those dandelions onto this envelope. So let me just show you that this is going to fit into, and I've added a lot of dimension onto this, but look at that. That's still going to fit into an envelope. So fold that down. It might not want to sit down too flat now because I've added so much dimension. But look at that. It slides in really easily. Just watch my little bow there. And see. Oops. Fits into a standard envelope. And then you can post that off. Isn't that cool? Oh, my little bee's caught there. Whoopsie. There we go. <laughs> so there you go. I love it. All right. Well, I will flip the camera back up so that I can say goodbye to you all face to face as I always like to do. Ah, oh, there you go. Deborah said it was her pleasure teaching us how to make that. Yeah. So glad you did. I love it. It's great. All right. And Laurie loves it too. She said it's beautiful. Oh, Megan um, Lacornu likes the pink one. She likes this one. Yeah. So I used the um, Symbols of Fortune Designer Series paper and the stamp set I used for this one was the um, Flowering Flowers stamp set from the mini catalog. And then I used the Bow Punch as well for the leaves. Yeah, so there you go. So there's two different ones, whoops, two different um, samples for you. So I hope that that gave you all a bit of creative inspiration today. And if you make a bridge fun fold card, I would love to see it. So be sure to add it into the comments of this um, this video so that we can, we can see it. All right, well, I'm going to tip my camera back up. So bear with me for one moment while I just do that. Here we go. 
okay oh very squeaky i think i had my clamps done up really super tight because i didn't want it to move again because it it fell down before there we go flip flip and lights there we go oh now my lights are falling everything's falling today what's happening <laughs> Everything's not done up tightly, I think. Oh my goodness, look how shiny I am. I told you I was hot. <laughs> oh, very hot. Hang on a sec. Let me, look at, I'm all shiny. It's hot work making a card. <laughs> all good. I'll have to go and have a nice cold drink, won't I? I'll go and get some orange juice. There we go. So there's my beautiful card. Look, my top matches today. I've got my, my yellow top on, or my mustard colour top. It matches the flowers. So how should I hold that that you can see? Can you see that? Isn't that cute? I love it so much. Look at that dimension. I can show you the dimension really well now that I'm holding it up. Isn't that so cool? Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for joining me today. It was great to have you along with me. And... Um, I will be going live again on Thursday morning at 11 a.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Time, all being well. Um, that is the plan. I'm not sure what I'll have for you. I usually, on Thursdays, I do quick and easy cards. Mondays, I usually do my more fiddly cards, like we've done today. Um, and Thursdays, I try and do quick and easy cards. Um, so we'll see what I have for you on Thursday. I haven't planned it yet, so we'll see what I come up with between now and then. So if there is anything I can help you with, please feel free to reach out to me um, and let me know. Ask me any questions if you, have, if you need help with any product or with ordering. If you have any questions about um, joining my team and becoming part of our crafting community, then you'll be most welcome to do that as well. And um, I'm happy for you to ask me any questions that you might want to know about, um, about joining Stampin' Up! and my team. So, oh, you're very welcome, Megan. Thank you so much for being here. It's lovely to have you. So I hope you all have a great week. Stay safe out in that weather, especially if you're around here in Sydney on the, or on the East Coast where the, um, the weather's a bit hairy at the moment. Please stay safe, look after yourselves, and um, I look forward to seeing you all again really soon. So happy crafting, everyone. See you soon. Bye.